The recent discovery of gold plates in an archaeological site located in the ancient tomb found in Panama reveals the past of the ancient history of the inhabitants of Panama. In 2011, in Panama, a major discovery was made. A pre-Columbian cemetery was discovered with the remains of bodies, weapons, and artifacts made of gold. The excavation that took place discovered several tombs in multiple levels bathed in gold making the discovery one of the richest discoveries in America. An analysis of the tombs suggests that the society to which these individuals belonged was following a form of hierarchy organization. Archaeologists first discovered the remains of a chieftain covered in embossed gold breastplates, arm cuffs, bracelets and a belt, as well as more than 2,000 small spheres arranged in a way that suggests that they were used as a part of a sash. Fort Davis Museum's team of archaeologists are a mixture of nationalists and international professionals in the area of pre-Columbian artifacts. Archaeological fieldwork is not the romantic treasure hunt sometimes seen in the movies. On the contrary, archaeology is a blend of scientific disciplines require methodological attention to procedure and detail. All of our expeditions are staffed by skilled individuals with specialized knowledge. The archaeological team from the Fort David Museum is experienced excavators and specialists dedicated to the discovery of ancient historical relics that contribute personally to the recovery and preservation of our past. The success of an archaeological expedition depends, to a great extent, on the excavation team. Organization is a key factor in the smooth management of the work schedule, and the field director must be able to depend upon the responsive and responsible staff. The ancient cave and tomb of Cacique El Quibian Malchia. The amazing story of the discovery of the ancient tomb of Cacique Malchia began when Marcos Montezuma, a young Nabe man, was digging a pozo, water well, on a hill and hit a carved rock in the shape of a rectangle slab. As he hit the rock slab with his pick, it made an empty echo sound. At first, Mr. Montezuma thought he hit an old septic tank. He then used his pick to pry open and lift the open rock slab to expose what was unearthed. And to his amazement, he found the tomb of the Cacique Malchia. Mr. Montezuma went into the tomb to find ancient relics, including ceramic pots filled with animal skins wrapped up with ancient writings and hieroglyphics and gold pieces including a wooden chest gilded covered in gold next to the mummified cacique El Quibian Malchia. After Mr. Montezuma told his friends and families of the discovery and he reported it to the authorities. The tomb of cacique El Quibian Malchia is in the cave that was sealed at both ends with rocks and mud. Today, the two ends of the cave are open and tourists can enter the tomb of Cacique Machia to discover the hidden mysteries and treasures of an ancient pre-Columbian lost civilization. I will present to you evidence of the discovery of the Ark of the Covenant found here in Panama. Stories told by Spanish writers who chronicled the conquest and the ancestral customs that continue on in the indigenous villages in modern Panama are valuable sources of information for learning more about what life was like for these powerful warriors. Panama, a narrow strip of land 700 kilometers long, which connects South America with Central America.
3,000 years ago, in the holy city of Jerusalem, King Solomon ordered the construction of a magnificent temple. Its purpose was to house one of the holiest objects of the Old Testament faith, a golden chest known as the Ark of the Covenant and the stones on which the Ten Commandments were reputedly engraved. For centuries the stones lay safe inside Solomon's temple, but then, inexplicably, the chest and the stone tablets disappear from history. How and why they were lost is one of the greatest riddles of the Bible. I'm absolutely sure that I know where the contents of the Ark are. I will present to you evidence of the discovery of the Ark of the Covenant found here in Panama. The Bible says that Moses went up to the mountain to talk to God for 40 days. At which point God gave Moses for the children of Israel the Ten Commandments and instructions to how to build a box to contain them. This box called the Ark of the Covenant was a box made of wood covered in gold with some gold statuary above it. If one thinks about it carefully, the box was man-made. Yes, according to God's instructions, but nevertheless made by man. The Mediterranean Sea, 5th century BC. A great commercial network created by the Phoenicians. In hundreds of archaeological sites scattered around the Mediterranean, objects are often found that are completely extraneous to local civilizations and cultures. An Egyptian amulet in Greece, a Greek vase in Africa, a huge multitude of goods moving from one country to another and another had to be transported and traded in some sort of systematic way. And it is the Phoenicians, with their tall headdresses, their formidable ships, their skills in trading, and their courage on the high seas, who made a name for themselves in this pursuit. We'll see how the Phoenicians took on a diverse civilization of cultures and wove them together to become the undisputed lords of the sea. The trail must start with what the Bible says about the loss of the Ark. What is quite startling is that there is nothing in the Bible that explicitly says that the Ark disappeared. It seems to just fade from history. And they shall make an Ark of acacia wood. Two and a half cubits shall be its length, a cubit and a half its width, and a cubit and a half its height and you shall overlay it with pure gold. Inside and out you shall overlay it, and shall make on it a molding of gold all around. And you shall put into the ark the testimony which I will give you. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its length, and a cubit and a half its width. And you shall make two cherubim of gold, of hammered work you shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at one end, and the other cherub at the other end, and you shall make the cherubim at the two ends of it one piece with the mercy seat. And the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I will give you. And there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim which are on the ark of the testimony, about everything which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel. The History of the Ark of the Covenant 
according to the second Maccabees at the beginning of chapter 2. The records show that it was the prophet Jeremiah who, prompted by a divine message, gave orders to the tent of meeting and the Ark of the Covenant should be taken out of Jerusalem to a safe place to hide from the invasion of Babylon. Jeremiah sent the four priests to carry the Ark of the Covenant to a safe place in the cave. Jeremiah said that the Ark of the Covenant is hidden and the place shall remain unknown. He said unto God finally gathers his people together and shows mercy to them. 2 Maccabees chapter 2 verses 4 through 8 According to the Phoenician history, the Ark of the Covenant was secretly taken out of Jerusalem around 600 BC and transported to Tyre, Phoenicia. Malchia and his family brought many Jews with him to escape the Babylonian invasion, and they all boarded three Phoenician ships in Tyre, Phoenicia. The Ark of the Covenant was also on board in one of those three Phoenician ships, and was transported through the Mediterranean Sea. Sailing through the Mediterranean Sea provided routes for trade for the Phoenicians. Also, a perfect escape route for the Jews to carry the Ark of the Covenant to a safe place hidden from the Babylonian soldiers. Once the three Phoenician ships made it to the end of the Mediterranean Sea, at the Point Iberian Peninsula, they headed out into the Atlantic. The Phoenician ships departed Phoenicia with various passengers on board, and some of those passengers were escaping Babylonian soldiers. A passenger on board of one of the Phoenician ships was called Malchia, and he left the nation Phoenicia with a chest of gold and various gold relics from the region of Phoenicia around 600 years before Christ. Malchia seems to have been in exile, escaping from the Babylonians with his treasures. Once Malchia arrived in Panama, he formed a group that was also passengers on the Phoenician ships and he set himself up as a king over them. The mummified body in the tomb is Malchia, and his corpse was placed in the tomb with the golden chest and other Phoenician artifacts. According to the ancient writings on the goat skins, Malchia set sail with the Phoenicians, and there were three Phoenician ships full of immigrants. The three ships left Tyre, the largest and the most important city-state of Phoenicia, located both on the Mediterranean coast as well as the nearby island. Their voyage went through the Mediterranean, passing Carthage, and then from Cadiz, Spain, and then three Phoenician ships set sail across the North Atlantic Ocean until they anchored in Laguna de Chiriqui, Panama. After the three Phoenician ships landed in Panama, all the passengers carried Machio's treasures to Volcan Baru, and there they made a village they called Saraiva. After the death of this great king Machia, his body was placed in the tomb found in the mountains of Vulcan, and with the mummified corpse were placed rows of parchment of goat skins and many other ancient relics. There has been a recent archaeological discovery in the mountain of Vulcan, Panama, of an ancient cave and tomb of Cacique El Quibian Malchia, with ancient ceramic and gold artifacts as well as a pure gold gilding covered tomb and chest. What makes this discovery so unique in Panama is because most of the gold artifacts, including the pure gold gilding covered chest, are from Phoenicia. In the items found from the tomb of Cacique, El Quibian Machia, were ancient hieroglyphics written on the sarcophagus and ancient writings on the parchment of goat skins and rolled, stored in ceramic pots next to the sarcophagus. The translation of the words Cacique El Kibian Machia, the words El Kibian or Kibian means king or great chief of the Nabe people, and Cacique means noble ruler. Machia is his name of the mummified king found in the tomb. According to the archaeologist and linguist Dr. Samuel Aaron Weinstein, who specializes in the ancient Egyptian dialects, he mentions in his translations of the parchment of goat skins found in Cacique tomb that the skins were brought by Phoenicians who wrote a detailed account of the goat skins about their voyages from Phoenicia to their arrival in the land, now called Panama. And the Ark of the Covenant should be taken out of Jerusalem to a safe place to hide 
from the invasion of Babylon. Jeremiah sent the four priests to carry the Ark of the Covenant to a safe place in the cave. Jeremiah said that the Ark of the Covenant is hidden and the place shall remain unknown. He said unto God finally gathers his people together and shows mercy to them. Shana 